Hello everybody, welcome to this video on live streaming high school sports as part of our ABC2 curriculum, the Accelerated Broadcast Club video series here. So today we're going to be talking about live streaming high school sports and there's a complete chapter, chapter 10 in the book, I highly suggest you read. And we're going to go over a PowerPoint presentation that goes over the foundations uh, information that you really should be learning about for live streaming school sports. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, we're going to have tips from experts in this presentation. And you can download the presentation in our Udemy course at the downloads below. This has lots of different um, tips from the experts in the industry. We're going to talk about camera tips. We're going to talk about some of the foundational knowledge of live streaming sports that you need to know, live streaming K through 12, even college level and minor leagues. You can kind of aspire to do more in your broadcast club. We'll look at some live streaming layouts and look at some pictures from around the world as well. So camera settings are really important when we're talking about live streaming sports. And we're going to talk about live streaming sports with uh, higher frame rates so you can capture fast moving objects. And you got to remember that there's no post-production when you're live streaming. So you got to get the settings right before you stream. You can't really fix this in post-production like you could as you're, if you're recording a video or a movie. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about operating a joystick controller and letting the play develop. And we'll talk about how, how it is, what's the idea. So a lot of people like to follow the ball, but you want to think a little bit bigger and maybe follow the play. And we'll talk actually to a student that I interviewed who's been doing a really good job of, of using a joystick controller as well. And then we'll talk about multiple camera setups, what it's like to be a producer. You might only have one camera to fade to during fast movements and another one for close-ups. We'll show you how to do that. And then we're going to talk about high frame rates, but also why high frame rates are important and what impact it will have on your computer. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about uh, aperture and the 180 degree shutter speed rule. So the 180 degree sorry, this is camera rule, the 180 degree camera rule there, that's right, uh, says that if this is your field, right, it's a football field, it's a basketball court, whatever it is, we want to keep all of our cameras on the same side. If we put even one camera over here shooting this way, it will disorient our viewers and they won't really know which way the game is going because you flip sides on them and now the left to right movement of the game has now changed and that's not good. So this is the way you want to do it. All of your cameras should be on the same side. If you were to put a camera over here, it would disorient the viewer. So we don't want to do that. Now, with that being said, the only uh, basically exception to this rule is if this camera is like, let's say it's a PTZ camera like this and it's, it's really far zoomed in. If it's zoomed into a coach, that's okay, right? It's not being used for gameplay. If it's zoomed into a bench or the audience, that's different. So that is the exception to the rule. But generally, you want to keep all of your cameras on the same side of the field. So this is just really basic stuff. Now, when we're live streaming sports, we want to generally stream in a fast frame rate. The faster, the more frames that you have per second, the more detail that you'll have when there's a fast-moving hockey puck or a lacrosse ball, or even a basketball, you want to capture that in as much uh, detail as possible. Now, you need to keep in mind, when you double your frame rate, you double your bandwidth generally just to maintain the same bit rate quality. So we're going to talk more about bit rates and resolution in an upcoming video, but I just want you to think about if you are going to double your frame rate, remember, you're going to double your bandwidth and you're going to double your um, processing speed. So your computer that you're using might not be able to handle doubling the frame rate. This is something to think about if your school is really trying to increase the quality of your high school sports streaming that you're doing or any school sports streaming, but it's not 100% necessary. In fact, we're going to talk, we're going to look at a quote from Christopher Sabato who says, we got to understand our audience here. If the audience is parents at home, and so what are they expecting? If they're expecting nothing at all, something's better than nothing, right? It doesn't have to be ESPN quality for them to enjoy watching their, their, their family, their son, their daughter play a sports game, right? Even when we're talking about video analytics, we'll talk in a little bit. I'm going to have two videos here that I'm going to show you guys as part of this video interviews that I did at a high school 
the athletic directors and the coaches love to get this video footage and play it back so that athletes can learn more about what, what's going on and, and how to improve their game. Well, um, that footage is still good if it's recorded in 30 frames a second. It's just better if it's recorded in 60 frames a second. So just remember, you're doubling the amount of storage it takes to record the video, the processing that it takes to process the video, and the amount of bandwidth it takes to stream. So you really need to take all of that into consideration. If it sounds a little technical, don't worry. We're going to talk more about that in the future. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the shot clock and why it's so important. We're going to look at Wirecast for this one. And you can see here that uh, we have a little shot clock here. And this is managed through Wirecast. This is the SAR high school that we're going to show some interviews with. The shot clock is so important for a lot of reasons. One is if anyone starts watching your live stream, you know, in the middle, let's say, uh, maybe they didn't catch the beginning or the end, they're not going to be keeping score on by themselves. You need to do this for them. It's quite simple. You can set up shortcuts on your keyboard, which uh, can kind of push the, 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 um, the score up two or three points at, at, the, at a time. So it makes it super easy. And uh, the templates are already there for you in uh, applications such as Wirecast, vMix, Livestream Studio, for example. If you're using OBS, you will probably have to use your own uh, template for this. So here's the shot clock here in a little bit more detail. You can see that uh, we have the score and we have the, the time of the game. Now, what a lot of schools will do to keep the time uh, synced up with the scoreboard is they will actually take a camera, zoom it into the, the shot clock, and then overlay that video into the shot clock, into the scoreboard there. So that's very popular. That might be a way to do this. And let's just look at Wirecast here in a little bit more detail. So the scoreboard input is generally on the top layer, right? We want it to be on top of anything that we do, regardless of whether we're switching between cameras over here. So Wirecast, if you're not familiar with it, has five layers. One, two, three, four, five. Generally, five is more than most people need. So you can see the SAR High School here has their cameras down here. And then they might have commercials, for example, here. And then the shot clock's always on top. Now, when we put that shot clock on top and we, we use the transition button to put it on there, uh, we have the scoreboard properties over here. And this is where we can change the scoreboard properties, change the score. And as I mentioned, we can set up hotkeys to quickly go back and forth. So something to think about. Now, the presentation that's included below, I'm not going to go over this because it would take an hour, but it's included below. You can read through this and, of course, read our whole chapter here because it has some great information on how to take your, your streaming sports to the next level. But I do want to include just a couple of the things here. One of the things that Christopher Sabato is saying, which I really think is great, is some people say, do it right or don't do it at all. And I have to say, Christopher Sabato is right here when he says, you know, at the bottom, at the bottom line, you have to work your way up. So something is better than nothing for students and athletes and parents. So get out there and do something. It doesn't have to be the best quality in the world. Don't worry about 60 frames a second if that shuts your computer down because it could. You need to have a really big network to do that. And then I just wanted to have uh, one more tip here from Tom Sinclair. If you are a camera guy, the camera guys here get a lot of the glory when it comes to live streaming sports because it's your job to capture the audience. And I think that you'll hear from um, Ian Fuller, who is the SAR High School uh, camera operator. He has a PTZ Optics 20X camera and an IP joystick. And he's going to tell you how important it is to have a joystick and use it in the proper way. But think about this. Camera guys should use Zoom more than they use Pan. Panning can get blurry if, you're not, if you don't have enough uh, bandwidth to really have a good quality connection with your camera. Camera guys should not attempt to follow the ball per se, but the entire play. Think about a punt in football. You want to have a nice wide shot to show the whole field. You don't need to be zooming into the ball ever so closely, or you might lose the play completely. And then finally, all cameras should be on the same field. We talked about that with the exception of cameras zoomed into a coach or a non-play area. Now, directors, if you do have multiple cameras and you do have the choices between switching between them, don't make the rookie mistake of having two cameras that show the exact same thing, right? We want to reveal additional details with these secondary cameras. So one might be a wide shot and one might follow the play really closely. 
And that's a tip I have for producers. If you somehow, your cameraman is trying to follow a play and they lose it, you want to be able to quickly go to a wide shot and show, you know, let, let the audience see. And the other qu question or uh, uh, tip here from T Tom Sinclair is don't switch cameras too frequently, right? You don't want to be switching cameras all the time, but uh, it is a good idea to have a backup camera if you are following a play and you lose it to switch to a wide shot. Then finally, compression should be used on announcers' mics. We're going to be talking about audio in a separate chapter, but audio, uh, announcers tend to get excited and they shout when there's a big game or a big call. Compression will push that down and make sure they don't peak, and it generally will make them sound better and more like an announcer anyway, since people are used to that. So those are just some of the tips I want to share with you. This whole presentation is available below, so you can get that and read through some of the tips from some of the, really, the industry experts in streaming sports here. So I hope you enjoy that and read through it. Read through chapter 10 here, which goes over a bunch of tips. And I'm going to leave you guys with two uh, videos that are going to play in a minute here. So we're going to listen to the athletes and the athletic coach of multiple teams and the athletic director at the SAR school. He's going to, uh, Joseph DeCorda is going to tell you about the value of video in sports and, and in, in his athletics department. Then we're going to talk to Ian Fuller, who actually uses a joystick controller with a PTZ camera. And he's going to talk about some of the tips for streaming sports. So let's, let's listen to those videos and then uh, we'll wrap up this one. All right, that's it, everybody. Thanks for taking the time to watch our video on live streaming high school sports. I hope this has been helpful. Bye, everybody.